PSP was first released in Japan in 2004, then everywhere else in 2005. It held on for a decade before being discontinued in 2014, selling over 82 million units in that time. According to Wikipedia, there are 1,923 games on the console. Throughout the lifetime of the console, there's been a vibrant homebrew and emulation scene. Today we're going to dive into the emulation side of things on the console. There are a number of systems that the PSP can run flawlessly, and one or two not so well like the N64. So let's take a look at installing RetroArt and take things from there. So what we'll do now is dive over to the PC. So that's us now over at the PC. First thing we want to do is go to the Retro RetroArch website. So we go to the download section of RetroArch and now we'll look for the PSP version of that. As you can see it's compatible with a whole lot of systems which is really good. Um, so what we do is now we found that so we'll download the PSP one. And now we want to extract the files from that. Now we've extracted the, the files from that, we can see the structure in here. And now we want to put this onto the PSP. So what, what you want to do is you can do it two ways. You can take the card out and put your card in a card reader. Access the card that way. Or you can plug your PSP into the PC and put it in USB mode. That's the method I'm going to use today. You will need a, obviously, USB cable to do that. So what we want to do here is open up the root folder of your PSP, go into PSP and then into game and drag and drop the RetroArch folder into the game folder and just let that transfer over. It's not the fastest but it's not a large file so it's not really an issue. Sometimes that's if you're doing larger files, you're better using the SD card reader or the card reader and just transferring it that way. So what we want to do once we've transferred the file over to the PSP is unplug the PSP and then start it up, go to your games folder and you will see RetroArch here and just start that up and let it start up. That will just let, the, let it install a file structure to the PSP. So once you've done that, either connect your PC back to your PSP or plug in your card into the PC and we'll go into the files again. So we're going to go back into PSP and now RetroArch. As you can see there's now a number of files there so what we want to do is concentrate on the downloads folder. That's where there's, you're going to store your games for the... That's where you're going to put in your games in the downloads folder. Now what I've read is you can um, put subfolders in here. Uh, the PSP will just not read that. So you just have to put the ROMs in. You can't really organise them in like names of consoles and things like that so what, so what you need to do is just put them in I've got a few different ROMs here from some co different consoles I'm going to put them in to the downloads folder So it's just drag and drop. So once we've done that, um, put as many games as your card can fit or as many as you want, and then just disconnect the console. So we'll go along to RetroArch, game, memory card, there we are. As 
So now what we want to do is go to load content and into the downloads folder where we've put all our games and now we just select the game we want to play There we are, we can now play Alex Kidd on the PSP, the Mega Drive version. It's been a long time since I've played this. As you can see it runs really nice. In my opinion these older games are the best games to play for portable game you can just pick them up and play them. So let's try another one. So let's try another game. Game Gear Shinobi. Pick the emulator you want. There we are, another game running perfectly on the PSP. That's a game I used to really enjoy back in the day on the Game Gear. These kind of games are very well suited to the, the PSP just because of the handheld nature of them. Just pick them up and play them. Let's try another. Let's try Hang On in the Master System. Again, Pico Drive, that's probably a favourite emulator to use for the Sega stuff. You can choose whatever one you want, but I always tend to go for Pico Drive. I'll try a SNES game now, Star Fox. Again, you can pick your emulator here. That's not a good thing about it, everything's all configured. You don't have to mess about configuring buttons and things like that, so it's very easy to install. And once you've done that, it's, you can just pick it up and play it. It seems to be running a bit slow that one, I'll maybe try that in another emulator. You will find this. you have to kind of mix and match the emulators a little bit to get some are compatible better with other games than they are with others so sometimes it's better to switch, and switch them about you'll, you'll, you'll find out for yourself and last but not least Tetris and the Game Boy probably the best handheld game I've ever made in my opinion so we'll try I don't know a lot of the emulators actually try Gear Boy And there you are, that should get Tetris on your, your PSP, it's even got the green screen effect on it, so as authentic as you'll get other than playing it on a actual Game Boy. And of course the famous music.
I better not get into playing this too much, otherwise I'll be playing it all night, so that's how to put emulators in your PSP fairly easy method to do it there is other ways of doing it, you can grab the emulators individually and put them in that way, but I find it better to have them in the one place, and that's RetroArch, so if you want to go ahead and install the emulators, that's the easy way of doing it. So hopefully this helps some of you out, and thanks again for watching. I will do most, more PSP related content coming up in the future, so it's a great console to do stuff on, and there's loads you can do on it, so if you're interested in that, please uh, subscribe and you can see some new videos in the future. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.